How are you, YouTube? You're with Got That Funk, and this is the video follow up to yesterday's video. Yesterday, in a moment of boredom, I asked my viewers to ask me some questions, and I left the video up for just a few hours, long enough to get enough questions to make a video with. Even if you didn't ask a question, don't just tune out now. Hang out. I'm going to try my very best to make this at least entertaining and, you know, possibly even informative. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Uh, um, by the way, I'm going to answer these questions in the order they were asked. <clears throat> Silver Era 309 asked me, do I like musicals, and if so, what ones? Well, yes, if you mean movies, then yes, the answer is definitely yes, and I'm a big fan of most of the old MGM, Golden Age of Hollywood uh, movie musicals. I'm less of a fan of some of the later musicals that came along, the Rodgers and Hammerstein musicals, for example, not too keen on that one. Musicals I didn't really go for would be like Cabaret and Camelot. Uh, my favorite musical of all time is Jesus Christ Superstar. It's also my favorite rock opera. I think Jesus Christ Superstar is fucking amazing a as a film. And uh, I highly recommend it. If you've never seen Jesus Christ Superstar, even if you're, especially in fact, if you're an atheist, watch the movie. It takes the piss in a good way. So yeah. Silver Era also asked me, do I still work on the guy who had a split dick? Uh, the answer to that question is no, uh, I don't. I don't see him anymore uh, for about a little over a year now. I haven't uh, dealt with him. And I actually have already made videos on this topic. I will link all three of the relevant videos in the description bar of Silver Era, and you can look them up, okay? Right, moving along, Tattoo Skin 72 wants me to expand a little bit. And he asks, how do you see the world of body modification growing and changing in the Western world? And why is it that people are okay with boob jobs and Botox, but frown upon tattoos and stretch piercings and whatnot? All right. That is almost the whole video by itself, Michael, but I'm just going to give you the, the, the bare minimum answer for your question. Uh, first of all, how do you see the world of body modification growing and changing in the Western world? You know, to be honest, I got into the body piercing game about 13 years ago. In fact, almost exactly to the day 13 years ago. And... Um, at the time, I figured it was a flash in the pan fad, maybe here for sort of five or six years and then go away. But here I still am piercing after 13 years. And I have now been a body piercer longer than I was ever a DJ for. So this is my main career, I guess, in my life now as a body piercer. I think that uh, to a certain degree, certain piercings are always going to be here with us as a part of uh, mainstream fashion. I think certain piercings come and go as fads. Um, but I think piercing itself as an industry is going to be here for a long, long, long time. I just think that the uh, the number of acceptable, socially acceptable piercings will diminish over time. And, you know, once upon a time, you know, 15 years ago or whatever, it was pretty much just ear piercings that your mainstream people were getting. Uh, nowadays, certainly here in the UK, uh, you almost can't be uh, past your university years without a piercing or a tattoo. I mean, there's an entire generation of people in this country uh, coming up with tattoos and piercings. And so I don't think that those people, when they get old enough to have their own kids, are going to have particular issues if their kids get tattooed or pierced and whatever. So I don't see it going away anytime soon. Your second question, uh, why are people okay with boob jobs and Botox but frown upon tattoos and piercings? I'm not so sure that's a true statement. I just think it depends on the people that you talk to. I know plenty of people who are disgusted by Botox and by boob jobs. And a lot of more people that I know, more guys that I know, um, are turned off by boob jobs than find them attractive. So I don't really know who these um, people who find it so great are because most of the people, male and female, that I talk to about uh, you know enhancements in the chest don't like them and most people that I know that can spot someone else who has had Botox injections to keep the lines out of their forehead especially um, just think they look ridiculous so they might be socially acceptable in the sense that you see them on television but I don't necessarily think they're socially acceptable in the sense that people who aren't on the same bandwagon think that they're such a great idea I just, it reminds me of high school, actually, Michael. Do you, do you, do you remember how in high school you've always got a group of uh, uh, popular kids, right? <clears throat> and the funny thing about the popular kids thing to me is that they basically decide they're popular themselves. 
and the rest of the school seems to go along with it when in fact they're not really popular because popular means well liked what they really are is well recognized they're popular in the well recognized sense but they're not popular in the well liked sense and i see body modification in that way as well i think that when it comes to botox and boob jobs and stuff they're popular in the sense that lots of well recognized people seem to like them and think they're cool but not necessarily well liked uh, by the wider population i could be completely wrong about that and tattoos and piercings again it really does depend on who you talk to um some people a lot of people are very disgusted by body piercing in particular maybe less disgusted by tattooing but a lot of people do think tattooing is a bit of a dirty sort of thing having said that like i said a minute ago there's a whole generation of people coming up now with uh, tattoos and piercings and i just think that over time these things tend to to mellow out i mean when i was a kid for example uh if you were a guy and you had you know really long hair you obviously were in a band or a hippie uh, whereas nowadays, you know, you see guys with suits and ponytails. It's not necessarily such a big deal. So, yeah. Anyway, I spent way too much time on that fucking question. I better move on. Right. Stan Marsh one asked me, what's the most unusual piercing you've ever done? I think the big toe would probably qualify, but I've done piercings all over the body. You know, I've done in between vertebrae, which is pretty unusual. I've done elbows. Um, I've done this little bit right here on quite a few people. I don't really recommend that piercing, though. Um, I mean, fuck, what's unusual to you? I don't know. But yeah, I've done loads. I think the big toe, for me personally, uh, definitely stands out as, as probably one of the most unusual ones I've ever done. Um, D-G-E-Y-P-S-C-U-N, I am not even going to try to pronounce that one, uh, asked me, what do I use to keep my head so shiny and smooth? I shave it, mate. I shave it with a, a Gillette Mach 3 razor and shaving gel. Simple as that. Nothing fancy. Laura Lila asks me, who are you? Uh, you know, some days I don't really know myself, honey, um, honestly, but for the most part, I, I'm just uh, making it up as I go along. <clears throat> Raven Blaze asks me, are you never going to give me up, never going to let me down, never going to run around and hurt me? <clears throat> you know... I don't sing, so consider yourself fucking lucky. And the answer is, nah, man. Me and you were like that. As far as I'm concerned, we're in it for the long haul, girl. We're buds, even though we don't know each other. <laughs> right. Shthonios asked me, can you please prove that you are male without giving away any personal info or breaking the rules on YouTube guidelines? The answer to that question is no. You're going to have to take my word for it. Do you trust me? I was born a boy and been male my whole life. Uh, you can take that or leave it. Uh, Thramagen asked me, do you like being asked questions like this one? What, you mean questions with no actual point or question? Love it, man. That's what I fucking live for, totally. Uh, Amazmo asked me, what's my favorite novel? I can say for sure without a doubt or any hesitation that is Dune by Frank Herbert. Uh... It's so well thought out, and the way it's been written is so engaging. I, I literally can't put it down when I start reading it, and it's the only novel I've personally ever read more than twice. I'm not a huge fan of novels in general, so for me to read any novel more than once is unusual. I think I've read Dune five or six times. Love it. <clears throat> okay, Liam JR 24 asked me, Are, am I or am I not Lord Voldemort? Nope. Harry Potter is not real. Uh, also asked me, how do you manage to maintain a positive disposition so often? Uh, well, you know, it's, it's an approach to living. I hate to sound as pretentious as I'm about to sound, but if I'm going to answer your question honestly, I'm going to sound pretentious. Um, way back in the 80s, I had like a revelation. Uh, long story short, I, I realized that my life was one event. And I could choose to think of my one event as a good event or a bad event. And therefore, when bad shit happens to me or when bad shit happens in the world, I take it on board as part of my good life. And so even when I'm upset or sad or morose, or whatever, um, to me, that's, I, I know everything is transient, man. Everything is temporary. We're moving through this shit. And... Anybody who is in a great mood, who thinks that that's how life's always going to be, is an idiot. 
And anybody who is really depressed or sad or upset or lonely or whatever and thinks that's how life is always going to be is an idiot. Um, because it doesn't have to be that way. It might be that way because you can fulfill the prophecy yourself by deciding how life is and then making it so. And if you decide life is going to be crap, then you can certainly make it so. The first step is making that decision that life is crap. I have decided that my life is a good thing. And therefore, I view everything that happens through that lens, even the bad shit. I hope that answers your question. Right. Um, let's see. Prophet Tenebrae asks me, if you could erase anyone living or dead from history, who would it be and why? And reminds me, therefore, to keep in mind that all of history might change as a result. Uh, for that reason, uh, I certainly wouldn't erase anybody from history. But for an even bigger reason, erasing someone from history is tantamount to killing someone. And I would not commit murder. I don't believe in capital punishment, and I don't believe in murder, so I would not erase someone from history. I do not have the right to decide someone else who had a life shouldn't have one. Okay, Wise Monkey Triple Eight asks me, "What is the main driving force at the core of my psychology?" Hmm. Well, um, as I've mentioned many times, I am a bit of an attention-seeking narcissist, and I suppose that is one of, if not the driving force behind my psychology. It's definitely one of the main ones. Uh, you know, I love attention. I can't help it. I've been like it my entire life. And, um, you know, sometimes I seek attention just because I want the validation from it. Sometimes I seek attention because it just makes me feel good getting attention. And, uh, yeah, sometimes I seek attention as a defense mechanism uh, to put people off thinking when I'm really upset or whatever. So, yeah. Since it seems to fit into so many different aspects of how I relate to people, I would probably put that as the answer to your question. Okay. Thorn is Dan asked me, what's my favorite prehistoric animal? Uh, well, I probably would have to say trilobite, okay? Um where I used to live in Dorset, up country, about 200 miles away from here, uh, there's a beach um, where you can find fossils really, really easy. I mean, you walk around, you probably wouldn't have to take more than 100 steps in any one direction, and you'll find either a brachiopod or a trilobite. And, you know, trilobite fossils are pretty fucking old. I think around about half a million years, of, or sorry, half a billion years, rather. And um, I love the idea that I can have something in my hand that's half a billion years old fucking you know that just I think that's fucking awesome so yeah and trilobites are one of the first uh, fossils I ever found when I went fossil hunting so trilobite okay um, where am I here we go uh, Gillis 429 asked me where I stand on the weapons legislation. I assume you mean in the USA, and I have to confess that I'm completely ignorant as to what legislation you're talking about, but I will say that I support the Second Amendment and the right to own firearms if uh, done so responsibly and stored responsibly and, you know, people are trained to use it and uh, keep them clean and everything like that, then yeah. I'm all for uh, weapons ownership if people are responsible with their weapons. Um... Spazzer couldn't think of a question. Hi, Spaz. Uh, let's see. Thunderbolt94 asked me, why are you awesome? The answer to that question is, I'm not. It's all an act. But don't tell Tommy from the Bronx that. You know, I want Tommy to believe it's all true. Anyway, uh, question number two. Am I a fan of the Beatles? And if so, what is my favorite song? Wow, okay, um, it would be almost impossible to pick a favorite Beatles song, but if I had to, I suppose I'd pick Hey Jude, because it has everything about a Beatles song that I like in it. But I like loads of Beatles songs. Rocky Raccoon is another one of my favorite Beatles songs. Um, Something is another one of my favorite Beatles songs. Come Together, I love a lot. I mean, the, the list is a long one. Okay, question number three. Um, what do you think is the wrong reason for someone to become an atheist? Uh, to fit in with other atheists, that would be a really, really bad reason. Also, to be edgy, you know, to sort of rebel against uh, their religious parents or whatever, I think that would be a really bad reason uh, to become an atheist. And the final part of that question is, do you think someone should just be an atheist strictly for rational reasons? Uh, I don't think people should be atheists unless it's a 
conclusion they come to based on their own mental process, rational or otherwise. Um, I don't necessarily think, I don't think it's my remit to prefer how other people's minds work one way or the other. Uh, my attitude, as it says on my page, is no matter what someone believes, whether they believe in a higher power or not, if their belief system you know, makes them a better person, and by that I mean more tolerant, more compassionate, etc., then I'm, I'm quite happy to accept people's beliefs as good for that person, no matter what they believe. Um, it's when beliefs become intolerant or make people less compassionate, etc., that's when I have a problem with someone's beliefs, it's whether they believe in a god or not. I mean, you know, if someone's an atheist, but they're a dick because they're an atheist, meh, I'm not, I'm not cool with that. Anyway, Deal With It Studios asked me, do you believe we have free will, or do you think we have no control over our decision process? Anyway, um, the two questions don't necessarily follow on from each other. First of all, do I think we have free will? The answer to that one is probably not. Um, from what I understand about how uh, chemistry and electrical activity and stuff in the brain work, uh, there's probably a more deterministic explanation to how we make decisions. Having said that, uh, I think all of that process is so deeply buried underneath consciousness that we experience the conscious sensation of making a choice with free agency. And so therefore, for all intents and purposes, for all practical applications, yes we have free will. We experience the sensation of making choices freely. And therefore, as far as it actually matters for discussion purposes, yes, I think we have free will. But if you want to get down to the nitty gritty science of it, we probably don't. Okay. S uh, Snake Bit Goat asks me, do you have dogs? And if so, what are their names and breeds? As a matter of fact, I do have dogs. There's Buster. And uh, over there is Murphy, his brother. <laughs> I can't pick up Murphy now because my it'll make my dogs fight. But yeah, two of them, Jack Russell, Border Terrier Cross. Uh, Abaddon5 asked me, if you could change one event in history, what would it be? You know, I would be tempted just to see what would happen um, in, in be, to be, you know, historically vandalous and, and like change it so human beings never invented the wheel. Just see what would happen. Would we even have civilization right now? I don't know. Mr. Soprano 125 asked me, or 0125 asked me, do you wish you went back to the 80s? Only if I could live my life over again from then onwards, and if I did that, I would not change a fucking thing I've done. Not one decision. Having said that, I mean, I had a great time in the 80s. The 80s was quite an exciting decade for me, and um, uh, but I wouldn't want to go back at this age now and live in the 80s because my value system has completely changed, and the 80s values were fucked up, man. Just my opinion. All the fucking money grubbing and uh, and social climbing that's a uh, and you know all that stuff that I recall from the 80s doesn't really appeal to me anymore. Tectix asks me, "What are your views on politics? Not what side of the fence you fall on, but rather what are your views on the practices and what is being done for society?" Well, that would be a whole video all by itself, but suffice to say, you know, um. I really believe that uh, human beings could really easily live together if everybody wanted the same shit. But since we don't want the same shit, we need a government. We need rules, laws, whatever. So, um, you know, ideally, I would love to say that I believed in anarchy. But the practical fact is I don't think anarchy could work on a large scale. I think anarchy can only work on small scale. Therefore, I believe we need government. I believe we need uh, some sort of hierarchy to, uh, you know, not that's that actually comes out the wrong way. I, I think we need devolved powers. You know, I think we need separations of powers. You know, for example, the police and the politics should always be separate. I think the courts and the, and the uh, legislature and the executive should always be separate and shit like that. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not really sure how to answer the question properly, uh, Tech, to be honest. 
But suffice to say that I am a loony, lefty, tree-hugging, bleeding-heart liberal who wants everyone to hold hands and sing Kumbaya. <laughs> okay. Right. Tommy from the Bronx asked me, how does it feel to be so close to being as cool as me? And how, how does it feel knowing you'll always fall short? <laughs> oh, Tommy, it hurts, man. It hurts. You know what? I admit openly that uh, I, I, I do not consider myself as cool as I consider you, man. I mean, you are one cool fucker. But, you know, there are different kinds of cool, Tommy. And, you know, to be honest, I, I fancy myself as a pretty cool guy, too. But, you know, there are different kinds of cool. And, you know, you're cool kind of like this guy. Whereas I'm cool kind of like this guy. And, you know, Tommy, admit it. You wish you had a little more funk. You know you do. I'll tell you what. If I ever meet up with you in person, I'll buy you a beer and we can have an arm wrestle. And whoever wins the arm wrestle will be the coolest. <laughs> All right. Gaglamesh asked me, uh, how do you spot good tattooists and uh, salons from the bad ones? And how do you find good artists? Um, basically, you only can go by recommendations um, from people you know who've already had work. I don't think there's a better way to do it than that. And um, yeah, that is the simplest answer to that question. Uh, Skid Row Radio asked me a very naughty question. Um, I think it was based on green eggs and ham because he asked me, would you, could you, on a train? Uh, the answer to that question, Ben, is yes, I would and I could on a train, um, provided that, uh, you know, the waitress serving the green eggs and ham uh, assured me that the, the taste of the green eggs and ham would be indistinguishable from regular, regular eggs and ham. You know, I'll try anything once, Ben, and twice if I like it, okay? You thought I didn't see that comment because you removed it, but I did. But I'm not going to say that comment out loud in real life. Are you kidding? Code, man. We're like this. You understood me, man. I answered your question, didn't I? Didn't I? Green eggs and ham. Dr. Seuss to the fucking rescue. <clears throat> uh, Soberred671 asks me, <laughs> let's say that the technology to make a person an entirely new body was discovered. And let's say it was not a one-way process. You could store your original body. Would you have a new body made? If yes, then describe it. No, I wouldn't. Oh, actually, I would if it was a clone of me because I cannot imagine, I literally cannot imagine looking out of any eyes other than these eyes and seeing this. I have tried to throw myself into someone else's head before and imagine what it's like to be that person. Can't do it. It's beyond me. So yeah. I would only be myself again. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't want a different body. I wouldn't want to look different. You know, I'm quite happy with the way I look. Um, yeah, enough said. Anastar211 asked me, since Americans are mutts, what are your ethnic origins? What part of Europe do you hail from? Well, um, most of my ancestry is British. Uh, some of my ancestry is Danish. And I supposedly have a grandmother who's either Indian or half Indian. And by Indian, I mean North American Indian there. Um, but nobody knows for sure because my grandmother was actually an orphan. She was left in a basket at the age of about three months old on the steps of a police station in 1903. And the thinking in the family is that she might have been half Caucasian and half Native American. Uh, which was why she was orphaned because back at about a hundred odd years ago, um, half breeds weren't exactly popular. Um, yeah, well, nobody knows for sure though, because we don't know who her parents were at all. But when she grew up, uh, she definitely looked either Indian or half Indian, you know, depending on, you know, you, you just can't know. It's where I get my dark complexion from is my grandmother though. The rest of my family on the other side is pretty pale. Spaceman 300 says, if you could meet anyone, living or dead, who would it be? Well, considering he spoke English, I would like to meet Gandhi. Um, I've admired everything I've ever learned about Gandhi. 
And um, I would love to sit around for an evening and uh, listen to the man, see what he's got to say, and ask him loads of questions, and pick his brain. So yeah, Gandhi. Godless Manitoban says, do you have to gauge your ears to wear the glass earrings? You really want to know. Well, yes, the answer to that is my holes are 10 millimeters and these are 8 millimeter jewelry. And yeah, I can't imagine how I could do it if I didn't gauge them. Rogue Moon says, he would ask me a question, but he doesn't think I would want to discuss it in public. Well, you're far kinder to me there, Don, than I am to you, because I recall asking you some pretty tricky questions over the years. Asked you if you ever killed anybody, asked you if you ever slept with a prostitute and stuff so if you your question was worse than those man it scares the shit out of me i'm really glad you didn't ask thanks rose baby 63 says do i still cut the way americans cut with my knife and fork or do i do it the way the british do it well i do it the american way rose i can't help it i can't help it i can't help it i do it the american way and why shouldn't i i'm fucking american damn it yeah Sarah Hano 6 asks me, have I ever refused to tattoo anyone? And if so, why? Uh, well, yeah, actually, Sarah Hano, I've refused to tattoo everyone who's ever asked me to because I'm not a tattooist. Um, <laughs> but to get to your actual question, because I'm pretty sure you meant to say body piercing or thought I was a tattooist as well as a body piercer, but I'm a body piercer, not a tattooist, and I refuse body piercings all the fucking time. For a whole list of reasons. I refuse to pierce people if they can't produce uh, ID and I think they're too young. I refuse to pierce people if I think for some reason that they're not going to look after their piercing based on things that they've said to me or previous piercings I've done and they haven't looked after them. I turn people away from piercings if I watch them get talked into the piercing right in front of my face. I will not pierce them. You know, my attitude is if someone wants a piercing, they know they want it. They don't have to be talked into it. And anybody who I witness get talked into being pierced, they can get pierced somewhere else. I'm not doing it. Um, so those are some of the reasons why I turn piercings away. There probably are more, though. But, yeah, I, I turn a lot of business away, frankly. Um, and somehow I still manage to stay in, in trade. Uh, Silver 6 K Raid asks me, do you think President Obama will lose a presidential election in 2012? Um, it's difficult to know or have any real guess uh, since we don't actually know who the opposing candidate will be at this point. Um, as far as I know, no one has officially thrown their hat into the ring from the Republican side yet. Uh, do I think Obama is likely to win? Yeah, probably because I don't think that the talent on the other side is really shaping up to be any kind of serious contenders. Um, but the beautiful thing about an election is you never know. Anything can happen during the campaign. Anything can happen. Um, I mean, hell, Obama could get shot between now and then. So he might not even be running for president in 2012. You know, I mean, we don't, we just don't fucking know. Uh, but stands to reason, uh, you know, barring accident or, you know, trauma, then I think he probably will. Yeah. Uh, where am I here? Oh, Evilanius asked me, if you could fuck up one thing in a hilarious way, what would you fuck up and how? Um, man, that video is so good. That, 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 that question is so good. I'm going to have to answer it in a different video, mate, because I, I really, really should give it more thought um, than, than off the top of my head. <laughs> uh, Raimondo900 asked me, will I be watching the royal wedding? Only if it's pissing with rain outside, I might be compelled to watch their wedding. But if it's sunny, or, or for that matter, if it's just not raining, I'm going to be out there with my dogs enjoying the, the uh, springtime. Couldn't give a fuck about the royal family one way or the other. Scotty0904 asks me, um, what other bands besides Opeth do I like that are metal? Well, I mean, I like a wide range of metal as you do, so don't think I'm just sticking to one genre here, but I like Soulfly. I've got like four or five Soulfly albums. Uh, I like Morbid Angel. I like Nile. I like um, I like Limp Bizkit, believe it or not. Um, let's see what else. I uh, Rage Against the Machine. Those are the more those are the more newer sort of metalish bands that I like. I know they're all different kinds of metal. Um, not a huge fan of Slipknot, but I've got one of their albums. Um, let's see, I like Machine Head. Uh, I like the Foo Fighters. I don't know you call those metal. I call them rock band, but uh, yeah. Anyway, um, 
Yeah, I like a lot of bands, really, but those are the ones that sort of jump to mind. Okay, I hope that answers your question. That's not a good idea, ask me what the best season of Babylon 5 is. And that's a really hard question, but, I, you know, on balance, I would have to say season 3. Um, and the only reason I'm picking season 3 over seasons 2 and 4, which are my other two favorite seasons, uh, is because when it was on TV... Season three is like every single episode ratcheted up the tension to the point where by the time you were halfway through the fucking season, I mean, honestly, uh, waiting a week between episodes was fucking torture. And for the whole hour, or even two hours sometimes before the next episode was about to air, I would literally be shaking with anticipation. I could barely contain my excitement to find out what was going to happen next. Season three for the win. All right, uh, Free Thinking Crusader says, Animal midget porn, sexy or gross? I can honestly say I have no opinion having never seen any animal midget porn. In fact, I haven't seen a pornograph pornographic movie since 1983. And those, I, I think we rented three movies that weekend and they all three sucked. And I haven't watched a porn movie since then. I don't really like porn. Apostasism asks me, um, well, he says, scientists have discovered that men losing their hair means they're essentially ready to mate. With this in mind and looking at your own hairstyle, are you, in fact, the Jesus Christ of sexuality? No. Thanks for the compliment, though, Matt. I, I, I should choose to take that as a compliment. Um, is that really true about being ready for mating? Because... When I lost my hair, when I started going bald, that's when my kids were born. So, yeah, that's kind of interesting. Uh, Lisa, L. John YT asked me, L. J. on YT asked me, um, what is the rudest question you've ever been asked? In my life, um, probably, are you a virgin? Because, you know, when you're a teenager, uh, you're pretty awkward and easy to embarrass. And the question is incredibly personal. And frankly, unless the person is thinking about having sex with you, it's none of their fucking business. So I think that question is a very rude question to ask someone, especially a self-conscious, scrawny teenage boy like me. So yeah, that's probably the most rude question I've ever been asked. Um, because generally speaking, I don't find very many questions rude. I, I, I'm almost immune to rudeness to some degree. Anyway, final question here. Dura can ask me, if I could assemble five men from throughout history to form a government, um, who would they be? And what, if anything, would I set as a no matter what they could not do? For example, would I prohibit them from doing slavery or whatever? Yeah. Okay. Um, yes, I would prohibit slavery. I would prohibit torture. And I would let them have more or less free reign other than that. And the people in my government would be uh, Benjamin Franklin, Gandhi, uh, John F. Kennedy, um, James Madison, and we need someone with a bit more of a military bent in there just for the sake of strategic thought. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I, I will, I'll go with, um, Eisenhower as well. That's my five. And, uh, not surprisingly, they're all Americans except for Gandhi. Uh, I think Gandhi would be an important influence to have because I think it's important to to have someone who would be arguing from a moral standpoint when we consider legislation and how to build a country. So yeah. Right. That's all I've got. This is the longest video I've ever made on YouTube myself. I'm really sorry guys, but uh, you know, if you stuck around for the entire time, I want you to type this in the fucking description. If you've watched this entire video, I want you to type Tommy from the Bronx is the motherfucking it. All right? Tommy from the Bronx is the motherfucking it. Type that in the in the comments if you watched this far. I want to thank you all for hanging out. Until next time, it's GTF got that funk saying may all your ups and downs be ups.